Cristiano Ronaldo. You know him, your dad knows him, your nan knows him. The world simply cannot get enough of Cristiano. The most followed person on Instagram with 593 million followers. He can do a simple post and in a couple of days, it has 18, 20, 30 million likes. Does he have money? Oh yes, he does. Ronaldo's net worth? Yeah, just a little amount. 500 million dollars, which is at least, I think, four Freddos. I know, I know, it's so many Freddos. Five Ballon d'Ors, five Champions Leagues, three Premier Leagues, two FA Cups, a European Championship, and most importantly, the greatest trophy of all, the Community Shield. That's a joke, by the way. Icon at Manchester United and Real Madrid, and a hero to everyone in his home country, Portugal. Despite all of this, it is crazy to think that there is a debate and relatively strong against Ronaldo being even the greatest of all time. Of course, that's Lionel Messi. And I am not going to get into a debate about this because I cannot be bothered with the comments going from my head. So I'm not gonna say anything. You tell me down below. Just don't shout at me. But how did Ronaldo become the person that he is today? Well, let's go into the many faces of Cristiano Ronaldo. If you do enjoy, then please do smash a like button and also subscribe if you're new. I'm hoping to hit 400,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're new here, please do me a big favor and hit that sub button. And of course, Mazzola Designs, my own company, link down below at top of the description. Use code Ronaldo for 15% off. And let's get straight into it. Some people claim that leaders are born, not made. However, if Cristiano Ronaldo is anything to go by, it is safe to say that early life experiences shapes us, and any challenges that you face can make you even stronger. Cristiano was born in February 1985 on the Portuguese island of Madeira. People don't actually know the fact that he's actually not born mainland in Portugal. Here's Madeira on a map, not Portugal. Ten it is Portugal, but not in Portugal. But it is Portugal. It's Madeira. Now you're confused. Let's go. He is the last of four children. Ronaldo grew up in a poor household. Notably, he recalls begging for burgers outside the local McDonald's at the age of 12 years old. He disclosed the story of a lady called Edna who always came out to give them burgers to the local students. Ronaldo's father, Jose Denise Aviero, served his country as a soldier who fought in wars against Mozambique and Angola. He returned home broken with PTSD and was jobless, which caused mental health issues. Unfortunately, his father turned to alcohol to deal with his current mental state. His father was a part-time kit man for his local football club, and this became Cristiano's stepping stone into the football world. It is widely known that Ronaldo and his father never had a strong relationship due to his father's alcoholic nature. And due to these experiences that he had growing up, this is why you will never see Ronaldo drink alcohol. And still, as far as I'm aware, swears to this to this day. As the example that his father showed him growing up, he wanted to make sure that he did not become that to his son or any of his children. So, which I praise massively. Ronaldo's mother, Maria de los de Santos Aviero, was a cook and a cleaner, and due to the lack of his father working, she struggled to fend for her family. This meant that her young children sometimes had to help her clean, to get a job done faster and to do more work to pay for rent. Ronaldo's mother, Maria, published a book called Mother Courage, and in that book, she disclosed the fact that she had plans to actually abort her last born child, which was Cristiano. This was due to the time of her life. She simply didn't think that she had the financial constraints to support another member to her family, as even before Cristiano, it was hard to live at the time of their lives. Even though she expressed her desire to go through with it, her doctors fortunately declined. Ronaldo's mother even tried to put matters into her own hands and drink warm beer and run and exercise frantically more than you should ever do while pregnant in order to cause a miscarriage naturally of course this failed during cristiano's school life he was known as being a crybaby that was his actual nickname 
he wasn't the greatest at school, allegedly, and never had any interest in academics and never did his homework. He was expelled from school at the age of 14 due to the fact he threw a chair at his teacher and due to being expelled, he focused on one thing that he knew that he enjoyed, football. He pursued football at Sporting Lisbon's Youth Academy. And as the story goes, that there was actually a rule at the academy that the player that scored the most goals would get a place at the institution. And one of Ronaldo's close friends called Albert Fantrao actually passed the ball to Ronaldo in one of the final games to secure him a slot in the academy. And due to this kind gesture by Albert, Ronaldo supports him financially to this day as a thank you. One thing about Ronaldo that you may actually not know is his heart surgery. When Cristiano was 15, he was diagnosed with tachycardia, a condition where the heart rate is much higher than normal. Thankfully, medics detected this disease early enough during his life, and he underwent a laser surgery to correct it. I never even knew that he even had a heart problem. In 2003, the moment came that changed Cristiano's life. Sporting played against Manchester United in a friendly, which I'm sure you already know the story, but if you don't, this is what happened. He played incredibly well, turning seasoned pros like John O'Shea, who was very good at that time, okay? Don't laugh. Making Manchester United players look silly, and this is Manchester United. It's quite hard to do that. Instantly after the game was over, a large majority of the players went straight to Sir Alex Ferguson saying, we have to sign this kid. And of course, Six days after that performance, Ronaldo became a Manchester United player with this incredible, incredible sweater. Look at that sweater. Look at it. Incredible. Ronaldo made his debut against Bolton Wanderers at Old Trafford in 2003. People already had high expectations of Cristiano, but no one knew what they were going to get with him. A young, however, very lightweight, but extraordinary tricky winger with an amazing amount of flair and creativity, however, was incredibly raw. The final pass may not be always correct. His final decision making may not be always right. However, you saw that he had the ability there. It was all about taking that and molding it into a more complete package. And year after year, season after season, he simply got better and better. This was where Ronaldo's work ethic truly came out. As you saw a boy become a man within two, three seasons, as he grew into his body, becoming almost the elite male physical athletic physique. A complete contrast to the boy that we saw only a few seasons prior. And during this time, winning three Premier Leagues for Manchester United, including one Champions League and one Ballon d'Or. And from this, he got the transfer of a lifetime, Real Madrid. 94 million euro, which at this time was an extraordinary amount of money, but one which the world did not at surprise whatsoever. And he did pretty good, you know, pretty good, I think. Four Champions Leagues, two La Liga titles, two Copa del Rey, three UEFA Super Cups, and three Club World Cups, and only the few amount of four additional Ballon d'Ors. However, there is a dark side here, which I simply cannot ignore, so I simply have to highlight this part of Ronaldo's life, because I feel like if I ignore it, then that is part of the problem. When he signed for Real Madrid, there was a accusation during the summer of 2009. This was when American model Catherine Mayorga accused Ronaldo of RAPE in a Las Vegas hotel room and investigations has been ongoing and was opened, reopened back in 2018. And as recent as 2019, court says that this case in Vegas should be dismissed as the federal magistrate judge in Nevada sided with Cristiano Ronaldo, who sued for more than the $375,000 in hush money she received in 2010, as it is found that she indeed was paid off. Was this simply to get her to shut up in truth or because it was false? You, you tell me down below. 
I simply have to disclose that this incident did happen because I feel like it'd be wrong if I didn't. Due to his upbringing with his father, he's always been known as a family man and being very powerful on his family values. Quoted back in 2015, if you don't have a family, life will be very, very tough. And despite Ronaldo having five children, his wife Georgina Rodriguez revealed that she's in fact had three miscarriages. As back in late 2020 last year, Ronaldo was due to be father of twins. And sadly, despite their baby girl being birthed successfully, her twin brother sadly didn't make it. This was during his time at Manchester United. And despite the pain of losing a son, he missed one game for United and returned to the pitch one week later. One part of Ronaldo's life that you may have seen a lot is he's quite a businessman. I present to you CR7, Ronaldo's line of clothing, accessories, partnership with Nike, underwear, socks, loungewear. You think that's enough? No footwear. You want shoes just like Ronaldo? Of course you do. Why wouldn't you? Sneakers, boots, sandals. Oh, I can't wait to get some CR7 wellies. You don't think that's enough? Okay, denim. CR7 denim. Ronaldo's line of denim clothing, jeans, jackets. I mean, why wouldn't you want to wear CR7 goddamn jeans, bro? CR7 fitness. Yeah, that makes complete sense. CR7 gyms, which I'm quite annoyed, only has two. One in Madeira and one in Lisbon, Portugal. CR7 play it cool. What does that mean? Let me ask you, what do you think CR7 play it cool means? Of course, it means um, aftershave. Ronaldo's line of fragrances for men. This includes a variety of, um, of smells. And you know, if you want to spend, um, how much is it? CR7fragrances.store, 22 pound. Bargain, I, that's, that is actually a bargain. I'm buying it right now. I want to smell like Ronaldo. Do you think Ronaldo wears always denim stuff and fragrances? Do you? Surely not. Just, I can smell like Ronaldo in my Ronaldo denim jeans while at my Ronaldo gym. And guess where I can stay at tonight? The Ronaldo Hotel. Pestano CR7 Hotels. These are official Ronaldo hotels, which I'm again, very sad. As there is only two of them in Madeira, again, and Lisbon, again. Why? Okay, sure. CR7 Drive. Drive? Ronaldo has a line of cars. Oh, wait, it's not cars. Sorry, it's, it's actually not cars. It's, um... Yep, he's got G Fuel. Aqua Berry Flavor Advanced Hydration Formula. It's a powdered tub. I don't care what you say. Ronaldo has G Fuel. CR7 Selfie. Yes, you know what I need? I need a Ronaldo phone. Now, this is indeed a CR7 app where you can have Ronaldo selfies. You can just Photoshop Ronaldo on a selfie, I guess. If you want to do that, you can, you can do that. CR7 children's collection. Yes, he's got a line of children's clothing, which I think is pretty genius. Just get a black t-shirt, right? Just smack a CR7 logo. Have like a motto saying, go fast or something. I swear that's a Sonic. Um, slogan and then just like say okay well now it's 50 pounds and it will st it, it will sell Ronaldo of course with all of this money needs more money what else do you need oh, of course you know a restaurant a private jet rental business a hair clinic and recently you may have seen Binance in which predictably if you so wish you can have Ronaldo NFTs yes Obviously, Ronaldo NFTs. Did you buy a Ronaldo NFT? I need to Google. I need to Google what this looks like. Ronaldo Binance NFT. I mean, it looks pretty nice. I think I'm not spending money on that though. I could just download it. Alongside this, he also tries to support different charities and fundraisers when he can with his philanthropy. He is an ambassador of three major charities: Save the Children, UNICEF and World Vision. He sold his 2013 Ballon d'Or, raising more than $800,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He also sold his 2011 European Golden Boot Award, raising $1.6 million for school construction in war-torn Gaza. He donated $1.35 million to Portuguese causes during the COVID pandemic. And despite everything that we know, about Ronaldo, it is crazy to think about what is still left to come, as a new Ronaldo could be coming round the corner, with his son, of course, having a massive interest in football and playing for many teams. People are already trying to compare 
Ronaldo Jr. to the likes of Thiago Messi, Messi's son. It is lazy as hell, but of course it was going to happen. There could be a world where Ronaldo's son could become the next generation of footballers. I mean, when you are being raised by Cristiano Ronaldo with the best facilities, the best trainer, the best nutrition, all the advice you'd want in the world. I am really interested now that he's getting to a good age that you can actually see him become more of a footballer, what he can become in only five years time. It's not that long to go. It'd be great to see if Ronaldo can guide him into this new part of his life. I still think that Ronaldo has a long way to go. Even at this time of his career, playing in Saudi Arabia for Al Nasser, he's become a lightning rod, completely changing how Saudi Arabia is seen across the world. And due to his signing, many footballers are following after him. Whatever Ronaldo touches, people will follow. What do you think will happen to Ronaldo after football? Do you think that he will end up going into management. Seeing how he acted on the sideline back in the Euro 2016 final, it would not surprise me. However, maybe he would be too busy to even think about that. I mean, if I was Ronaldo, I would probably do same too. Despite all of the debates between Messi and Ronaldo, you already know that Ronaldo, we've gone through that a million times. So, my message to end this off is that appreciate both of these players and appreciate Ronaldo as, especially after the World Cup, a lot of disrespect has been given to Cristiano, which I feel like is just not deserved. He is by far the best player of all time alongside Messi and for me, no one else comes close. In terms of longevity, no one can come close and the story of Ronaldo is for me just as incredible as anyone else's. A great story of how hard work, determination can come together to create this almost robotic, like perfect superhuman that Cristiano has become. I'm kind of looking forward to like when he's like 60 or something and like he's just there. Like surely he can't have a six pack at 60, like at least at some stage, you've got to loosen up, bro. I, I'm looking forward to seeing Ronaldo just kind of not be perfect, like, eventually. Maybe that would never happen, but I'm, I just want to see him just on a table in a restaurant, eating pasta, okay, and just, 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 just fat. I want to, I want to see him, like, have, like, a little bit of looseness, but would never happen. Tell me your thoughts down below in comments on Ronaldo. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you next time.